Anyway, pick some bands here. Victor Lissandra for Team WE. And, well, from their side, looks like the plan's not really changed. For G Tigers, Diana, this time yep. taking out LeBlanc, so more of a focus on GA. Question is if Sevier or Maokai would be the last band for G Tigers. I still think you should take away Sevier from Mystic, so you avoid again that hard engage conversation we can see from World Lead, who can snowball really well if you get ahead in the laning phase and get into team fights in the mid game. I think the Sevier would be a better choice here just because we saw Smeb being able to deal with the Maokai very effectively. I mean, to yeah. be honest, he reminded me with his equalizers of Denzel Washington in his latest action film, The Equalizer, serving that much justice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've not seen it, so I We've can't really comment. We've heard this thing for Crop for like three days now and he really wanted to say it. He really, he asked me it was if great. it's all right if he, if he talks about that. Uh, and also about balls, something about joking about that. But also, Malco has uh, been the two big points for you. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Rek'Sai, final ban here for GE Tigers. So, on the uh, red side, didn't want to first pick Rek'Sai. Leaves Jarvan open, which is what they banned last time around, and it looks yeah. like Spirit's going to take that straight away. So no Maokai for Luka just yet. Can still go for it, obviously, because GE Tigers decided to go Rumble instead, a pick we have seen work against the likes of Maokai before. And I still, I'm still a little bit surprised about Spirit being so happy about this Jarvan here after the nerfs because it's been hit and miss for him, honestly. We've seen him being shut down completely in the early game. We know Lee has the ability to do it. We've also seen him do fairly well. And I know it's his main pick back from, from uh, the LPL and where they haven't played on 5.4 yet in terms of like their, their LPL. I'm really expecting to see a Sivir pick rounding out this World League composition yep. just because they're more than likely going to get the Janik and they get the Jarvan. They've ran this composition the entire tournament. And a speed comp versus the Rumble is really useful because you can get out of the Equalizer relatively safely, unlike the Kalissa that we saw last pick, who just kind of fries in it. It's exactly the same setup we see for them. They take the Janna for some sort of disengage at least, and then you just have full on dive in. No Diana this time. I wonder if Ari might come in in the mid lane or potentially this any pickup oh. we have we know he plays it he's the second most played champion in uh, in solo queue and also he used to play when he was on world elite academy the few games he got in there mm. in there lpl well he didn't play it he was spanned away honestly in almost all the games but almost. he plays any mid lane yeah. he does play it I this mean, is the time the, to pull it the out the question is yeah do you take a risk now and and go with that just try it i mean Probably worth the worth the risk at this stage. Yeah. Either way, Lee Sin for Lee, and we also see uh, Gorilla will take Nami this time. I think the risk you have here running the Annie mid lane is that with the Lee Sin Rumble versus the Scion, it's not that easy to focus that lane just because of how tanky the Scion can be. And you know, yes, snowballing uh, the Rumble is good for your team. You know, shutting down Scion doesn't really do all that much for you. And the Ari is going to be the pick. And an, again, another high skill match. Oh, 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 oh. oh, okay. Another very high skill mid lane matchup. Yeah, I, I really don't agree with Mystic going as well here. I don't really see how that's going to do enough for, for World Lead in terms of the laning phase and the potential snowball. They need to win this game. Sivir would have been so much better for the entire composition. But uh, G Tigers changing it up a little bit. Still a lot of kite coming in. But suddenly you have the Yasuo, who's obviously going to be. Together with Lee, Sin, and Lee together as well, the two guys, to set up some uh, some nice kicks and of course an army. I think that Yasuo, uh, Yasuo's wind wall should block Scion's ultimate as well. Like you should just run into it and <laughs> kind of fall over or something like that. But either way, interesting choices coming out of WE and uh, G Tigers this time. Yeah, and both mid laners going all in. But will it be enough to keep World Elite in the tournament? We'll find out right after this.
And welcome back, guys, to the Intel Extreme Masters, our final semifinal of the day, WE versus the GE Tigers. And GE with a possibility to move on to the grand finals off of this Yasuo pick for Kuro. It's, it was a pretty interesting pick, man, wasn't it? I have a question quickly before you jump in here. Okay. Do you think Kuro is a little bit frustrated he gave up a solo kill to Shia, and this Yasuo could be a reply? Uh, I mean, yeah. possibly, of course, Perhaps. you can break, uh, you can block a lot of the charms and, and orbs of deception coming in. Obviously, this is not a pick that we see very much in the in competitive play. He's been getting slowly buffed a little bit, a little movement speed here, uh, here and there, but coming into this, this is Kuro's third competitive game on Yasuo in his career, so it's definitely not a champion he's known for. He has not played it at all in 2015. Right. Well, we'll see what he can do as he's we... Two and oh. yeah, he's 2-0. He's 2-0 and oh all time. Perfect record. <laughs> Just like Lee's Rengar, a perfect <laughs> win rate. Well, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to Summoner's Rift, guys. GE Tigers versus WE, as my voice goes back to its normal timber. We'll see. Tambor. Tambor. I can, thank you. I'm so glad you're here to help me with my pronunciation. Well, you've been struggling a little bit today. i got to help <laughs> yeah. you out where I can. I can't deny this. <laughs> GE Tigers looking to maybe get a ward in here. Gorilla just chasing Mystic away. There's some bloodthirsty support right there. Gets the deep ward in. Deep-ish. It looks like it's going to be standard lanes for the time being. Praying Gorilla. Lee rocking the SKT skin on Lee. <laughs> it's, the it's, it's the motivation for him to get a skin later on. Do you really want to channel your inner Bengi, though, <laughs> if you're Lee? I'm not so, Maybe not I'm not so sure. But this, the, the skin is in uh, memory or memoir, depending on... Memoriam? He's actually still alive, guys, just not at this tournament. <laughs> he's still doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although the maybe these the days the, the new new skin perhaps a little more appropriate. Uh, perhaps, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not Lee's gonna put some pressure in that top lane yeah. and try to help out Smeb again, or if he wants to maybe help uh. out Kuro as well, especially once they get to level six. Just the amount of kill threat that you do have with that Yasuo plus Lee is going to be terrifying. Yep. Uh, and just, you know, looking at the draft right here, I, I thought that they may go for a double AD again. Uh, with this composition as we saw that last pick and Nami effectively just pr providing a disengaged support just like we would see in their last composition. But that last pick coming in, uh, I think the Nami, once the Janna was taken away and the Ezreal was removed, I think they were just like, well, we got Nami, screw it. Let's just go for the Yasuo and see what we can do. Because at this point in the tournament, G is probably very confident, right? Yeah. And they want to make sure this is probably a little bit of a mind game for TSM to say, hey, we have this pocket pick available. Because if they, if Koro has a strong performance here on this, it's just one more wrench in the works of TSM's plan to play against this. So it's it's very valuable in this situation, I feel. That's really how Kuro's been, though, all season, right? I mean, just when you think he's run out of mid laners to play, he brings out the victor. Today, it's the Yasuo. You know, and like you said, if he does well, it's a, it's a scary thought for TSM to have to deal with potentially another champion in the mid lane. And for all we know, too, because GE has played so standard in terms of their composition throughout this tournament, or standard by GE, yeah. Um, we really don't know if they have anything special prepared. They, they certainly haven't been challenged enough to show it. True, very true. Yeah, and during the uh, winners' interviews that they had on day one of the tournament, uh, GE was actually mentioning how they, they haven't had as much time to watch all of their opponents' VODs, but obviously all the information from the coaches and the analysts that's coming through is still more than enough because they've had textbook replies for every single opponent that they have played. Right, and th th that's the problem is when we, you look at the champion pools, the, they're just pretty big. It, the exception maybe with Lee uh, on this team, but he, there are so many other bans that he doesn't ever really have to worry about running out of junglers, and Jyn Air tried to ban him out, and then even when he was playing pretty badly on Rengar, uh, they still found a lot of ways to win because they gave so many power picks over to the rest of the Tigers. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, there, a lot of teams have been struggling week in and week out. And remember in Korea too, these are best of three matches. Teams have had a chance to adapt to what the GE Tigers are throwing at them. And there has still been, the only real answer is Faker's LeBlanc. Looks like there might be some action here in the mid lane. Chia taking a bit of damage from Kuro's Yasuo. Lee waiting in that river. And here he comes. Oh, not quite getting the angle, but there's Spirit right there. Lee on the defensive now. There's the knockup, but it doesn't connect. Lee having to burn that flash to get back into it. 
A little bit of a missed timing there, I suppose. I want to touch on that. Oh, look at that. She jumped on by Kuro and he eats the charm. Yep. Oh, here's Spirit, though. Kuro, did you not know that Spirit was just there? Looks like he's ready anyway. Doesn't even need to use that flash. Meanwhile, Smeb a bit low in that top lane. Luka, of course, did use that trick to get the fast level two against the Raptors with the one death early on. Yeah, and such a lane bully. Sion is so frustrating to deal with because he's constantly kicking his minions into your face. And we've not seen Lee try to move towards the top lane. He did wait for Smeb uh, to get ganked first before giving him some assistance previously. But to go back to your previous point, Monty, uh, Fakers, LeBlanc, is the only thing that beat them, as you highlighted. Decisively. 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 Yes. Touche. Um, <laughs> however, tomorrow, the, <laughs> the Western mid lane god has some great ch champions in his pool. And if Bjergsen is going to try lead TSM to any map victories tomorrow at all, it's going to have to be of some incredible assassin performances. Yeah, Ooh. almost certainly, because you have to get those 1v1 kills against them, because once GE groups up, it's lights out. I mean, there's not really been anybody. Uh, Jenner has that one win, but it's been a while since uh, that victory. And they've, I mean, GE has just improved from that point forward. Spirit getting a ward in. He will pop, actually, Lee's Raptor buff right there by putting his trinket into the tri brush. Making yep. a play right here. This is potentially a vulnerable rumble. Oh boy, He's not yeah. Six. Smeb very, very low. He flashes right away, dodges some skill shots. Aluka taking some turret hits. Lee coming up to provide a bit of support, but he's not even needed. Smeb doing a very good job dodging things there. I mean, WE, they, they had the level six advantage. They might as well go for that one. They didn't tank the turret exactly in the best way possible, and considering he knew Lee was in the top side, I think they couldn't commit to that as much as they might have liked. And now Smeb with the equalizer going to make it a lot more different. Yeah, and again, for World yep. Elite, even though they're even in lanes at the moment, um, despite the bottom lane actually Mystic being bullied around by Prey and Gorilla, um, if they don't get a lead, if they don't get ahead of GE Tigers, once GE start grouping up, they're just going to put so much pressure with Rumble, with Yasuo and Nami, that team fight is terrifying. It's really interesting, actually. He's starting Cutlass on Yasuo in the mid lane. So, uh, of course, typically we see Yasuo go for the static shift first just to take advantage of his passive and yeah. give him some more wave clear. Uh, this says to me that he's going for very aggressive trades in this situation, that he wants to repeatedly trade, 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 and be able to continue to uh, just heal back up to full health and keep that minion wave pushed. Uh, of course, the setup in this game, pretty darn good for Yasuo overall. And if we see the same kind of uh, decisive team fighting, the setup off the, the tidal wave is going to be pretty impressive. Yeah, and Kuro, of course, maxing his E on that Yasuo sweeping play. So if he's going to get into melee range, makes his life a lot easier to land the knockup from Steel Tempest once he gets those stacks up from his Q. So Kuro could just be looking to set himself up. Uh, an easier line, it's going to be very difficult to hit an Ari with the range tornado because of the fact she's going to have that spirit rush. So. Smart play, and this is some, some support for Smeb. Almost like a repeat to the previous game. Smeb gets ganked. This time he doesn't give up first blood. Yeah, and then like Luka might say, be in trouble. Nope. There's his Zoni. Yeah, Zoni equalizer comes down. Aluka is going to have to try to flash away. Well, no flash available. There's a nice Aqua Prism from Gorilla, and first blood goes to Lee. And everyone runs from Ghost to Luka, or double Ghost to Luka, I suppose. Lee's been they get out clean. Lee's been taking a lot more kills this tournament than he normally yeah. does. I'm pretty sure that one was pretty safe to hand over there, considering <laughs> it was at max like 2v3 up in the top side, and they weren't that committed to the dive yet, right yet. But yep. they you get that kill. To All You're the right. same, and <laughs> should give it to Gorilla, of yep. course, naturally. You're absolutely right, Monte Cristo. I'm glad we're on the same page with that one. The one thing that Jarvan has shown at the World Championships is the ability to get early dragons, so World Elite did, uh, managed to grab that solo, but now she is in trouble. Was yeah. in trouble. <laughs> Maybe still, no, not really. Whoa, oh, goes in. A little bit of damage. Aluka just using that ult to get back to lane fast. Smeb, an <laughs> agile robot suit. He's on the run now as well. A little bit of damage. Actually, Aluka turning around. The minions starting to poke away at him a bit. Is there any champion that's funnier than Sion? No, there's not. <laughs> I, I don't just, think so. You just no. can't help but laugh when he ults. It's fantastic. <laughs> you know he's usually going to miss, too. That's the best part. It's, it just seldom ends well. You know. I sincerely Sion. hope that live audiences start rattling their feet more when Sion's are running. <laughs> it's something that has been yeah. picked up in the LCS studio because we're that's seeing a great. fair amount of Sion. Oh, that's awesome. And you, you just end up feeling the rumble. And the reason it's so brilliant <laughs> Is it always ends in a because <laughs> it never hits. Yeah. It never finds a target. I think you can add that like whoa. Oh, right. <laughs> while you while you rumble with your feet.
But, uh, well, don't say Rumble. Good. That's confusing because that's a different champion. Stamp your feet. That's right. Yeah. Buzz killer Doa. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yes, yeah, standard lanes, standard CS, kill advantage to GE, despite being uh, down a dragon, but it doesn't matter because at some point GE will stop grouping and then you don't want to fight Rumble in the dragon pit. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, Brain Grill doing a lot of damage to this Ooh. bot turret. Mystic uh, starting starting the tier, so he is getting pushed in a little bit, going into Trinity Force immediately afterwards, so looking right. for a little bit of a faster power spike. But Prey's really going to have an edge from not having bought that tier for a short little while. And I really don't like that. If you look at World Elite's team comp, there's not a lot of damage. Nothing's going to come from Scion, not a huge amount from Spirit. When you've only got two damage sources, I'm not a big fan of the AD carry man immune build, but in the late game yeah. it can work. In the late game, it can work, but like, it, especially, it, you have to get there, right? Yes, I, I, I totally agree that yes. it's very unlikely in the situation that you actually get there. And the other thing is that wind wall can block so much of Ari's damage. Oh, yeah. You know, one good wind wall in, the, in an engagement, and that like halves the damage output of the team. Even more if you count True Shot Barrage in there, Mystic Shots, etc. Yeah, There's yeah, so yeah. many options. Here we oh, go. Be coming in from behind, trying to get a plan to see. He's going to kick him back. There's a last breath pop by Kuro. Kuro trying to get the damage. Ignite used. Is it enough? Doesn't look like it will quite be. And Shia just barely gets out, that sub was, 50 health. That was actually really nicely played by, yeah. by Shia to get out of that one because he did get a lot of distance with the Spirit Rush and then flash right back over towards his turret. So they did lead, he did lead GE on a merry little chase. And Shia has been very impressive individually this tournament, I have to say, um, which is you know what we would expect from a number one player in solo queue. Yeah, great yeah, pickup. Um, in contrast to Ninja, who only really looked good this sort of last week, uh, who uh, Shia is replacing, very, very confident, and there is so much pressure. Coming up against GE Tigers, arguably, uh, almost definitively the strongest team, and she is just not faced. The only thing is, in this matchup, notice how he doesn't have a winning lane necessarily anymore, and now she is feeling the pinch. He's down on CS against Kuro. Yes, he did just get ganked, but leading up to that point, Kuro had been playing very aggressively and wasn't in a passive mid lane ma matchup anymore. And this is very atypical of Kuro as well. He normally does not play this aggressively during the laning phase, so He's switching things up, uh, toying with his style a little bit, because he's he's usually the one who's just sitting right back at his turret, and he just farms and ends up uh, being spot on the team fights in the late game. Uh, you did, you generally see more aggressive play out of Smab uh, up in the top side instead, but this time it has been a lot of wave pressure coming out of out of Kuro. Yeah, it's interesting as we see Prey take this bottom turret completely unopposed, but uh, you know again just showing how GE Tigers seem to kind of come with something new every time you see them, you know, oh what, now Kuro can play this aggressive mid lane style too? It's it's so scary for anyone that has to play this team. Well, and, but that's what the greatest teams do, right? They, oh, yeah. they constantly adapt, they make the changes that are necessary in order to keep teams guessing about what they're going to do next and to uh, instill that worry and fear in their opponents as well, they go into a series. Shia coming up to try to make a play on Smeb in the top lane. Aluka misses that all. But here comes Shia. It's still going to be a lot of damage. Oh, Charm misses. Tidal Wave misses as well. Everything missing. Smeb does go down. Doesn't look like the turret is going to finish off Aluka, but it looks like Shia in a lot of trouble. Lee kicks him back under turret, but turret does not want to cooperate there. Knockback onto Prey. And it looks like Shia will escape from this one. Wow. Yeah, but they're so chunked out, and yeah. now they're just going to push down the top lane turret. So, uh, in fact, like, just by diving Smeb right there, they committed so much HP to that engagement that they're actually going to lose an objective off of it unless Spirit can trade in the mid lane, which, given how little damage that turret has taken, I don't think is going to be too likely. Uh, uh, it's probably at about 50% HP right now. There is a Siege minion, though, so unless somebody gets there quickly enough, maybe that'll oh. be a close one. Smeb actually didn't teleport into the mid lane, but it looks like Kuro... Oh, he's actually taking the long way around. Yeah. He is scared. So they had a chance to save that tower had they used the teleport, but instead going down into the bottom side. I think that's a little bit of an error. And it's interesting to see how World Elite two games in a row have focused Smeb's rumble, but I feel it's like a little bit too late. Oh Let's boy. see if they can get a second kill this time around. Uh, three more coming. Dove again, that's right, but they're not going to be able to get there soon enough to save Smeb. Can GE try to equalize this one? Aqua Prison gets flashed out of by Spirit. 
And will the fight continue? Lee thinking about coming over the wall, but I don't think he's going to find an opportunity. Dragon up in two seconds, too. I really like that play from World Elite. They had the numbers in the middle lane. They realized that uh, Mystic could push bottom. And as a team, they were on the same page to get another quick kill. This will also lead to the second Dragon of the game for World Elite. So they're keeping themselves relevant. They ended up trading towers despite uh, um, giving up a kill. But it's, it's again, it's, it's pretty good decision making. It's calculated and hopefully for World Elite, they can make more of those plays in the coming minutes. Yeah, not only that, but they knew Equalizer was down and he had just burned his TP as well. So there's really no counterplay after that. Definitely a good call from WE. Uh, Luca going for the crowd and the cowl actually before picking up anything else so and Smeb looks like he's going for Leandris again it appears to be another Leandris rush so something that there's a lot, lot of arguments for and against the efficiency of the item and whether or not you're going to keep somebody in place long enough etc etc but uh Again, it can work against the Luka, who is stacking HP, who is stacking some MR. Yeah, I think in the long run, definitely a great item to have on Rumble. Just not sure if you want to get it immediately or yeah. not. Kuro now finishes his static shift pretty, pretty late right there on this Yasuo. Well, he did get that Cutlass first, so you'd imagine that would be a little bit later than normal. GE trying to take this mid lane turret spirit, though coming down, Mystic firing that two-shot barrage up to... Uh, Clear. It's top Something lane. in the top lane. Hits yep. map. Hits there we map. go. Nice. <laughs> nice shot. Wow. Got him all the way across the map. That was amazing. It was intended. Yep. Totally, totally intended. But the scary thing for World Elite is GE Tigers have got Trinity Force, have got that Shiv, they've got the Haunting guys and almost level 11 on Smep. So if GE were to decide they wanted a tower, say this middle tower, and they decide to all group up, there's a yep. lot of damage. Oh! oh! Gia coming in, trying to do some damage to Prey. There's the tidal wave to zone a bit. That leaves uh, Ari on her own, and Prey managed to pick up a kill. Spirit traps him in the Cataclysm, though. Prey trying to do damage. Knock up, though, by Jan. <laughs> and Luka <laughs> comes in and just stomps him flat. GE will go ahead and trade 1-1 one, one with WE there. That was a good sigh on ultimate. There we go. Oh, yep. Prey. I, I was flashing forward for yeah. that kill. Uh, she was already zoned out of the fight. They want this turret anyway. Really unnecessary to go in. Yep. And there oh we go. Boy. There's the kick on to Spirit. Yeah, last breath will get another kill for Kuro. Equalizer should save some of the GE Tigers, but no, Ezreal manages to pick off Lee Sin there. Supports backing away and Luca still being kind of the big tank they need him to be right now. World Elite managed to hold on to the tower for the time being and they managed to pick up a kill. Kuros doesn't have the damage to just insta-gib all of World Elite. He still needs to build up that Blade of the Ruin King, still right. needs to build up some more flat AD. So World Elite, despite being jumped on and giving up that initial presence in the mid lane, again, they've responded relatively well and they've kept it even. The problem is, again, you need to be ahead. Yeah, if you're playing and, against GE. Yeah. Also, some really greedy play right there from GE. Yeah. Uh, when you have to, they really have to keep the goal in mind. And the goal in mind is to get that turret, which GE had a very poor engage right there that was kited beautifully by GE. Prey trying to flash forward, getting himself in that cataclysm range, and then having no other answers to get out mean, meant that he died and it did stall out that push. And then also, we did see Lee flash in for a kick onto just Spirit, which they tower dove with the Yasuo ult. Spirit didn't even have Cataclysm, but it was certainly not the best use of those summoners and those combos. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, GE is styling a bit here or, I or what. I think that might be possible. I mean, keep in mind, too, that they were a bit sloppy in the last game and they ended up down a few thousand gold. Being kind of sloppy in this game, too, but this time they're up by a few hundred gold. So despite still, you know, maybe not the cleanest play from GE, they still are kind of sticking with it even better than they did in game one. Not going to stop Aluka from taking that top turret, though, and that will even up the turrets, at least, between WE and the GE Tigers. And GE, have just they've got their sights set in this mid turret. They've stayed here for the better part of the last three minutes, and you've, they've always had multiple resources trying to push the wave through and trying to get it under control. And it hasn't resulted in the tower yet, but you could argue it's because of the tower dive. Well, look at the flank wards, too. Uh, you know, without that tower, they do have to have much more commanding vision around the mid lane uh, as they attempt to siege, but it's all there on both sides, covering any entrance that WE could take through this. WE with good wards on the top side, too, so that Aluka can keep pushing up and playing aggressively Smed now with that Leandris. Yeah, yep. that previous bottom lane play where World Elite uh, transitioned from the mid outer to the bottom lane where they, they towered over Smeb was also in part thanks to the vision 
that have been placed around this. So if Wilderly can decide to or opt to play around either the mid lane or the red side jungle of GE Tigers, they can just transition quite seamlessly and relatively safely thanks to all that vision they've afforded themselves. Yeah, and the question that comes in here too is once the Blade of the Ruined King is done on Yasuo, who's going to stop the split push? And uh, WE doesn't really have an answer because there is the percent HP damage onto Rumble and onto Yasuo at this point that is going to make it very difficult uh, for this Scion to stay alive in the mid game. Uh, and to stop the pressure, and Ari uh, has had to build pretty defensively, doesn't actually have a lot of damage items at this point in the game, and Kuro pretty, pretty far ahead. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Yasuo as well, against some of those big CC-based tanks, because not only will Blade of the Ring King burn through the HP, but Yasuo is going to have that bonus armor penetration once he decides to ult. Yep. So if Aluka is the unlucky... Oh! Whoa, did, that did he get he it? Got he, it. Did. he got it. He got it. Nice. Mystic stealing that blue buff with the two shot barrage, not bad. And you'll notice what happened right there was GE placed a pink ward, then cleared out a blue ward. So Mystic was actually judging that true shot barrage before they even started it. Yeah. Good timing. Very impressive by Mystic. Dragging up in a couple seconds now. Looks like Shia might be able to take this bottom turret. Curl wants to say no. He's going to go in on this. Wow, Shia in a little bit of trouble. That's a lot of damage coming in from Yasuo. And Kuro, smart. He doesn't need to continue this. He just needs to poke Ari out and get ready for that dragon. And that's exactly what he's doing. He didn't even have to use his ult. Yep. Yes. So. Smart play from Kuro as well, because you saw World Elite leave the mid lane towards River. So it would yeah. have been a relatively risky engage. And by popping her ult at the same time, you really set yourself up in a good position, especially around this dragon. She a, a bit low and ultless yep. as this goes in. Smab walking down right now. There's the TP from Scion. Yeah, Prey's got to back off. He's a little bit forward here. Blue team does take the dragon, though. WE managed to steal it. And now Prey in a little bit of trouble. Knockups coming in. Aluka making a big difference. Equalizer does go down. Mystic with the first kill. Aluka still charging down the river. That's a double kill now for Mystic. GE on the run. Spirit coming in to try to make something happen again. Smab turning with that flame spitter. But again, a triple kill now for Mystic. Kuro in a little bit of trouble. He slowed up. Trying to get back to that turret. There's another kill. And it looks like WE, they might actually be able to get an ace. Mystic coming in again. Wind wall goes up. Yasuo comes back. And Kuro gets a shutdown onto Mystic. So in the end, an ace for WE. But Kuro at least gets something out of it. WE gets the turret as well. A big win and the dragon. Wow, well played by WE. Uh, and right there, GE was really not committed to either taking the dragon or actually turning right there. Aluka did get the flank in. And uh, in spite of the fact that there was a tidal wave for the disengage, uh, Smeb places a three-man equalizer and walks forward, gets knocked back by the Monsoon. So there is no engage onto the back line. Aluka doing a good job of tanking up front. And, uh, you know, GE just not very decisive in that team fight. They yeah. could have used the, the equalizer a lot earlier right there and tried to make something happen. And uh, Kuro, I don't believe, ever used his ultimate during that engagement, too, so didn't take advantage of the Nami wave whatsoever. I mean, this isn't a champion that he's known for. Now Mystic is going to die, and he actually forces a flash out of Jitsa here at the end as well. You can see the Tornado coming in may have been able to finish him off. Yeah, I think the Tornado into that last wave definitely would have, but that is a massive win for World Elite. Another tower, another dragon, so that's their third of the game as well as the near ace, uh, was ace actually. All of the gold was spent completing an hourglass for Shia. So that's going to give him more survivability against the, the Yasuo all-in. And with the fact that Mystic is now 4-1-3, and three, that little hump that his build had suffered is now being overcome. So that late game is being accelerated for the, the carry that needs to have the damage on the side of World Elite. And they're not Oop. stopping yet. There's a win wall, just keeping Kuro safe there. He did finish his Blade of the Ruined King, so that's an important buy now for Yasuo. Added a little bit more critical hit onto that afterwards as well with his next item buy. But once again, we see GE Tigers down by a few thousand gold. Down a little bit farther maybe than we saw them last game. For GE Tigers, this team comp needs to be even tighter when they group up. And to explain it in a yeah. little bit better wording, because of the fact that Kuro is so dependent on getting two or three or the important people knocked up for that last breath, if he's not in sync with Gorilla or Lee's kickbacks 100% in sync, you're going to have those team fights again where Kuro is spending most of his time kiting and running around, waiting for the opportunity to go in. Well, I, I think that one was just confusion as to whether they were fighting at all, because if 
if Smeb was going to go in after the equalizer like that, you needed Kuro to go in with the last breath first when the Nami tidal wave uh, hit the most of the team. So uh, GE just not executing that particularly well, and uh, Aluka playing, just doing a good job of tanking right up there in the front line and allowing Mystic to clean up from the back. Yep. Now GE Tigers, when they came into this tournament, they said that they were going to win it without dropping a single game. And I feel like right now we're seeing them kind of come, coming the closest to not doing that with that we've seen yet. Now well, GE still is a... This Scion, which we have seen so difficult to kill this tournament, uh, this is a team with two Blades and a Leandris. So this is going to be exceptionally powerful at dealing with some of these these big frontline tanks, and also, if they have any opportunity to take Baron whatsoever, it is going to die extraordinarily quickly. So they don't need a big timing window, and WE has to keep their eyes on that objective. I also like the fact that for GE, they do have multiple damage threats. The fact that you do have top mid and AD carry Scion, as you've already rightly pointed out, Monty, is just going to be for the frontline, and if he doesn't stun and he doesn't get those knockoffs for Shia and Mystic, it's not going to work out well enough. Shia needs to hit those charms to remove one of the threats from the Tigers. Right. GE successfully defending that bottom tier 2 turret for the moment anyway. I wonder if they're going to dive this considering Smeb isn't there. They do see yeah, it in the mid lane. They've got a good position on it right now. Some folk coming over the wall. 20 seconds for TP from Smeb. And only a minute till that next dragon too. Spirit taking some damage. Aluka coming in. There's a tidal wave going through. Last breath doing some damage. Lee getting a bit low though. First kill comes in for Scion onto Kuro. And now Mystic starting to make something happen. Oh, they caught Prey in that little area by the uh, lane as well too. And GE just getting destroyed in another team fight. Another kind of lack of coordination. It looked like Kuro going in very early and just getting blown up. And then uh, things getting worse from there. Prey's positioning, too, was terrible yeah. uh, during that team fight. Getting caught along the wall and easily killed. And now WE, the massive gold lead and taking out an inhibitor. So they've established wow. a very firm foothold in this game. And We're they've getting... found the right engagements. Monte Cristo, this might be the first competitive loss on Corky for Prey. <laughs> Shocking. It's possible, yeah. We're seeing Definitely a little bit possible. of the old Prey, though. You know, I mean, that's that's the, the Prey from about a year ago or so. The one that had kind of trouble with positioning in team fights. Uh, the Prey from this year has been great, but this game, not so much. It'd be a big come from behind victory at this point for GE. We'll see if WE can close it out. They've had the better positioning in the team fight so far. I think they've punished GE's maybe lack of experience on this mid lane Yasuo. Every time GE have grouped up, it's not been 100%. Ooh, that's a big hit. Yeah. Uh, hasn't been 100% on point and will delete. They just consistently find good fights. The Scion is working this game. I'm not traditionally a massive fan, but it seems to go in. Ooh, Lee going in just by himself and dying. Where is the coordination here? And look at that, Aluka coming in, threading the needle, getting a lot done. And GE Tiger's in trouble yet again. A double kill coming in for Xia. Pops has Zonia's Hourglass and Smeb not able to get back for the kill. I think he got charmed there as well and Prey down. That is a perfect ace for WE. That's going to be the game. I think they're going to go try to end it. I think you're right. Wow, wow. I can't believe it. GE Tiger. Tigers, I mean, we've seen them be a bit sloppy before in the past, but this kind of, uh, it's its a new level, and you can't do that against a team like WE. They played it out very well. I'm actually super surprised they're not trying to end right now, considering there's still a 20-second timer on Corky. They want a Dragon instead. It will be number four for them, but I feel, All right. I feel like WE had a really good opportunity right there. A lot of respect for GE Tigers running the risk of getting caught out. Kukura didn't use his last breath either, so if they had barreled together at a Nexus turret, maybe, maybe, well, they could have got caught out. He went in and yeah. uh, tried to get the kick so that Kuro could ult right there. That was the entire purpose of that move. And you really see this Yasuo we'll is not something that GE is used to playing around. And let's take a look at this. I mean, Lee, G, Lee was hiding in the pit that entire time. There is the kick. Oh, both. Kira just didn't pull the trigger. Shia and Mystic were midair. Was he close? Yeah. Well, Definitely. Yeah, the range is yeah. very, very large. And so they get him in the choke in the end, but they just can't get the coordination of these team fights. She is going to dash forward right here, get out of the equalizer, and then go ahead and Zonia's baits the flash out of Smeb, and Prey not timing his rocket correctly. Itza will come in with the W. And there's the double kill from Mystic, who's been doing just a great job of positioning and staying behind his tanks this game.
Wow. Well, there you have it. WE with a possible chance to end. They opt to just grab that dragon again. Now 10,000 gold ahead. This is absolutely the biggest deficit we've seen GE have in 2015. Well, and it's great play from World Elite. They're, they're, they are playing aggressively. It's what they didn't do, in my opinion, as effectively in the previous game. And the, the Scion is enabling that in some ways thanks to that ultimate being able to charge in. But what I also like from World Elite, they've had great vision. Once again, if you look at that mini-map, it is just littered with blue wards. GE, oh! Whoa, and meanwhile, Lee gets a little bit too close, gets taken out, and WE is going to try to take this Baron now. Oh no, and Gorilla comes up again. He's like, I'm next. Double kill for Shia. Maybe Shia was sandbagging playing Diana because he knew <laughs> that he could play Ari and LeBlanc in the main. Very, very the effective offs. for them. Yeah, it's been a great pickup. I think we might see that band in uh, the next game. I would imagine we're going to go to game three here. Baron's still being worked on by WE. Looks like they'll be able to get it. And Mystic just pushing into that mid lane now. And with the Baron buff, with the inhibitor down, with GE seeming inability to use this comp in a team fight, I think we can uh, assume uh, WE is going to take this one. Yeah, we should be seeing a game three right here as WE goes through the motions of cleaning this one out. And yep. Luca, so tanky at this stage. And it kind of all went wrong in that fight in the bottom lane where they weren't on the same page. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where Mystic did pick up a triple. Yeah, and it just continued to roll through there. Got the items completed. Interestingly, if World Elite finish before, I think, 37 minutes 20 is what I took stock of the previous game. It'll give World Elite the choice of sides That's huge. in that deciding match. And here, here comes Luca one more time. Whoop, right through the middle. And GE gets a chance to turn this one around. There's an Aqua Prison, but Spear comes in with a knock up on the Smep. Tidal Wave cannot save him. Zonius goes down. That's a big Cataclysm. GE blown up very quickly. Double kill already for Shia. And WE with an easy cleanup in this team fight. Prey able to do nothing as he's taken down. Another kill for Mystic. That's a double for him, I believe, this fight. Nope, just a single. He took out the inhibitor as well. There go the Nexus turrets and the GE Tigers. If they win this one, they're not going to do it perfectly because WE is forcing it game three. GG. Very, yeah. Great play from WE. Yeah. And this team really coming together. Smile on Spirit's face right there. So we'll see if GE tries to play another champion that they have zero competitive experience <laughs> on. Uh, they certainly made it a lot harder for themselves to get to the finals. And uh, uh, a questionable decision in the end. GE Tigers came into the tournament saying that they were not, they wanted to win flawlessly. They played a champion that they have limited experience on, none this year, and they got punished for it. They were not on the same page, despite the big smiles and grins all around. <laughs> they don't look too phased. They don't look too phased. Phase, but you have to, you have to call, call out the, the elephant in the room. They were not on the same page. For a team that is yeah. so good not at reacting at and is so in tune with one another, yeah. well, they were listening uh, to different frequencies. Let's find out a little bit more about that <laughs> as we toss it over to the expert desk.